Hi, I'm Dr. Eric. I'm a cardiologist. I spend most of my days uh, working in the hospital, uh, but also some days in the office seeing patients. My usual day in the hospital starts uh, with with uh, procedure. Um, I spend a lot of time uh, fixing people who got fixing arteries and people who have blockages and arteries to their hearts. Um, also. Some people are born with a hole in their heart. We, we do fix those um, here in the lab. I have partners that also put in pacemakers when people need it and um, do work to fix blockages in people's legs and in the arteries in their necks and arms. I see patients in the hospital that were asked to see uh, with other heart problems, uh, scheduled tests. Uh, usually late in the afternoon, we're reading the tests we've scheduled. Um, those hospital days uh, can be long at times. Um, my usual day is about 10 or 11 hours. Um, days when I'm not in the hospital, I'm in the office seeing patients. Uh, those days are, are a little more routine. We've got patients sent to us that uh, have a heart problem or may have a heart problem that we have to evaluate. Uh, those days tend to be a little bit shorter. We, our, our schedule otherwise, we um, share call, taking care of patients in the hospital um, on weekends and at night, and, and that's something I share with my partners, and fortunately I have a lot of partners. Uh, so that comes about about once a week or one weekend a month, uh, you're in the hospital for all that time or at least taking calls at home and, and might have to come in and see somebody in the middle of the night. I guess some people would say that your job is, this, this job's stressful. Uh, I don't usually think of it that way, but, but in the hospital you're very busy. Um, sometimes patients are sick and there's an emergency. Those things you have to handle right away. Uh, but otherwise it can be a little hectic, uh, but I, I wouldn't say it's stressful. To become a cardiologist, there's obviously a lot of uh, uh, education you need. Um, Typically, you go to college and, and get a bachelor's degree. Um, most people have some sort of science degree in chemistry or biology, but, but that's not so important as that you have a degree. And then you apply to medical school, which is another four years of college, uh, um, pretty much two in the classroom, and then two, you're out sort of uh, following a doctor around and, and kind of getting some hands-on training. Um, after that, to be a cardiologist, you, you do what's called a residency, which is more on-the-job training, but you have more responsibility. Um, in, in my case, that lasted for seven years. Um, if you go into other specialties, it's, it's either longer or shorter. Um, but it, it's, it's a, a lot of training, but some of that is, most of that is hands-on, and you're actually working while you're doing it. Traditionally, people have a, a science background in college, but, but that's probably not real important. You get most of that science in medical school. Um, you have to have some requirements, science requirements in college to get to medical school. But you learn most of what you need in medical school as far as the science goes. Uh, um, medical schools more and more want people with different back backgrounds, so it really doesn't matter what kind of degree you got at first. I mean, i probably recommend that, that along with college, what's real important is to, is to follow somebody around, get out in the hospital and see what people do. Um, get in somebody's office, and, and it is a long haul, so you want to really make sure that you, you're you interested before you start down that path. There, there are, are great parts and, and awful parts about being a cardiologist. Uh, uh, the best first, um, it sounds silly, but you get to help people. Sometimes you actually really do, do save somebody's life. Uh, you make people feel better. Um, for me, if you, if you like uh, doing things with your hands and seeing the results, um, we do a lot of things that make, make people better right away. Um, there, there are new technologies and new uh, treatments and new procedures that we do that change all the time. So, so you really are always doing something new. Um, and, and probably the best is you, you're, you really do help a lot of people. Um, the, the, the bad side of cardiology, uh, there's, there's a couple things. Um, 
along with helping people, um, there are some people you can't help, and uh, you've got to be able to handle that, and you've got to be able to talk to patients and, and give them bad news and give their families bad news, and um, you know, hopefully that doesn't come along often, but it happens, and, and, and it's it's not ever a fun thing to do. That that's an awful part of the job. Nobody ever wants to do. Um, Practically, the, the part of the job I hate the worst is the paperwork. Um, in cardiology and, and in all of medicine, um, there are a lot of regulations. Insurance companies and, and the government regulates what you do. So for everything you do, <clears throat> there are forms to fill out. There are people to call to, to get insurance to pay for the procedures and the treatments you do. Um, nobody teaches you how to do that before. Um, that's a part of it that, that nobody likes and, and that's certainly the worst of it for me but, but that's part of our, our practice every day. One important thing that a lot of people would, would consider a, 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 a bad part of becoming a cardiologist um, is the hours that, that you might work. Um, I, I'm fortunate that I'm part of a very big practice um, so we have a lot of days off, and our, our hours are, are reasonable. But I probably still work 10 hours a day, sometimes more. Um, all cardiologists are on call on weekends and, and at night. And because my practice is so big, our call is spread out. A lot of people in smaller practices um, work longer days, don't have as many days off, and their call comes around much more often. Um, for, for every cardiologist, though, when you're training, when you're going through residency, um, your hours are always long, 12-hour days, 13-hour days uh, or better, and call is always spending every third or fourth night in the hospital for a few years. Um, and just a lot more hours uh, than, than many other jobs. Um, I, I don't, if, if you want to be a cardiologist, that's not necessarily a downside, but but you do at times uh, spend a lot of hours at work, hours that you can't be with your family and, and do other things. My final advice, if you want to become a cardiologist or think you do, um, would, would be a couple of things. First is make sure. Find out as much as you can about it. Um, go find a cardiologist and follow them around and see what they really do. Get a good idea if that's what you want to do or not. The next part of that would be be, be ready to work hard and, and work hard starting in high school and college. Uh, you know, do your best because your grades do have to be pretty decent to get into school. And then I guess the biggest thing is, is be pretty sure you want to do it and, and then keep at it. It's kind of a long haul, but, but uh, it, it's worth it if that's what you want to do. Um, but you, you just have to be persistent. Uh, one other thing to consider if you're interested in becoming a cardiologist is that, that you, you, cardiologists make a, a good salary and a good living, but that doesn't really happen until you've been through medical school and, and residency. Um, so probably on the average, a cardiologist doesn't start making their, their full salary uh, until they're, they're in their mid-30s somewhere. And a lot of us uh, went through school on loans, which can get pretty expensive. It's not unusual for somebody to have over $100,000 in school loans, uh, which you've got to pay back. Um, so just, just keep in mind that you'll make a good living, but you're not going to do that right away. It's going to be down the road a few years.